You wouldn't think that a video about dry hair and moisturizing would be so controversial. This is probably gonna make some people mad. <sighs> Nobody ever gets mad at you, what's your secret? Hello and welcome to the Queendom. I'm Sarah Ingle and I accidentally discovered that almost everything that we ever thought we knew about dry hair is wrong. Like really wrong. And it means that some basic things that we always thought about hair aren't true and might even be leading you to do something that could damage your hair. But what's tricky is <sighs> the people that are spreading this usually are the ones who know a lot about hair. I'm sorry. I do think that they really mean well and that they do really know a lot about hair, but the cosmetics industry controls a lot of the hair education that we have and they'll sometimes push something that might not quite be right if it sells. Finding science-based hair sources and studies is ridiculously hard. You can't just Google it. And if you do find something, it's usually extremely expensive and really difficult to understand. Probably the most respected source is Dr. Robin's Chemical and Physical Behavior of Human Hair, but most people have never heard of it, and it's over $200 just for a paperback copy, and it can be so painful to read that a scientist admitted to me they can only get through two or three pages of it. It's a whole book and not just an article, so you get to hear his insights on things like the struggle between actual science and things that companies know will sell. In one section, he gives a list of words we non-scientific people use to talk about hair and then explains what we actually mean. One word on this list was about to send me on weeks of mystery solving. <laughs> Moisturized because if it doesn't mean what we think it means, it changes everything. If I said to you, dry hair feels softer and smoother than moisturized hair, you'd probably roll your eyes at me because it doesn't even make sense. Turns out we've been using the terms moisturized hair and dry hair completely wrong. How dry or how moisturized your hair is literally refers to how much water is in your hair and that's something that you can measure. Turns out people rated hair with more water in it as less moisturized. Hair that's literally drier and has less water in it was always rated moisturized. Completely backwards. They ran a whole bunch more tests and proved people call hair moisturized if it feels soft and smooth. When people say hair is moisturized, they actually mean conditioned. And when they call hair dry, they mean that it's not soft and smooth. Damaged hair often has somewhat more water in it. The Journal of Cosmetics and Toiletries even calls the phrase dry damaged hair an oxymoron. How dry or moisturized your hair is, is mostly controlled by relative humidity. So like literally when there's more water in the air, there's more water in your hair. Like it's that simple. There's even a chart that you can check to see about how much moisture is in your hair depending on the relative humidity. Now in come the hair brands. I used to work in marketing. Like I have an undergrad and a master's degree in marketing. When you have a problem, there will be a marketer there to sell you a solution. <laughs> I'm like partially kidding. Honestly, as long as they still have a job, most marketing people care more about having a bunch of customers that want to rave about their product to all their friends than they do about sales. They're not trying to be deceptive or greedy. That's the finance people. Anyway, people think that their hair problems are because their hair is dry. That's tricky for brands to handle. Let's imagine what might happen. Welcome to Sarah's Hairy Hair Place. Is there anything I can help you find today? Yeah, I need something to moisturize my hair. It's been super dry lately. Oh, uh, okay, so do you mean something to, to condition your hair perhaps? No, I need to moisturize it. Mm -hmm. So would you describe your hair as brittle, coarse, and frizzy? Yes, it's dry. That's actually a common misconception. That coarse, brittle feeling doesn't actually have anything to do with the amount of water that your hair has in it. But it feels dry. Totally understand. It turns out that dry feeling doesn't actually mean that your hair needs more water. If you want something to make your hair feel smoother and softer, you could try one of our conditioning treatments, like a hydrating conditioner. Technically, you wouldn't want to be hydrating it. The problem isn't actually that your hair is dry. Yes, it is. Don't you think I would know if my own hair is dry? Oh, I, I'm not saying that Every other store has moisturizing products. Are you telling me that they don't work? It's not that they don't work. They just call them moisturizing when they're actually conditioning. Look, my hair is dry and I don't want it to be. What did you suggest I do? You could jump in a pool. 
To avoid that mess, brands just use whatever terms customers want to use. So moisturizing products do not add water to your hair, they're just conditioning products. That doesn't mean that your hair moisturizing products are no good. Conditioning your hair is still super important, but they're just not actually adding or keeping water in your hair. So can your hair be too dry? Like is there even such a thing as not having enough water in your hair? Not really, but sort of. Let's say you blow dry your hair completely dry on high heat. That dries your hair more than it naturally would have air drying. Now your hair has less water in it than that chart says that it should have based on the relative humidity. So the water from the air goes into your hair to get things back where they should be. The drier hair actually looks better. It's when the hair re-moisturizes itself that can cause you problems. Think about what happens when you jump in the shower and get your hair all wet. Your hair returns to its natural shape. So if you have curly hair, it goes back curly and curled straight hair flattens back out again. So as water from the air enters your freshly blow dried hair, basically the same thing is happening. It's way less water than dunking your head in a pool. So it only reverts back a little ways and that's when it looks frizzy because it's like in this in-between state. People generally agree on what's happening here. This isn't the controversial part, but it gets misinterpreted as a reason to moisturize your hair to make sure that it doesn't frizz, when really a more accurate way to look at it is if you wanna maintain a style, avoid humidity changes, and maybe even look for a product that tries to keep some of the moisture out, at least temporarily. Some hair, the moisture might travel in and out more quickly. Others, it might take a little while longer, but if you stay at a certain humidity level long enough, eventually Eventually things will even out and your hair will be at the moisture level that it should be for that humidity level. So at first I thought, okay, we're just using the wrong words to describe this. Moisturize, conditioned, whatever, who cares, no big deal. But the problem is people use this idea of dryness and needing to keep water in the hair as a basis for a ton of incorrect hair theories, ideas, and advice that could potentially damage people's hair. Okay, so if they haven't already, here's where I'm afraid that the hair people might come for me. There's a pretty widely accepted idea that you need to balance protein and moisture in your hair. It's why people tell you that you need to use a moisturizing treatment after you use a protein treatment. The basic concept is that too much protein supposedly blocks water from getting into your hair and it makes it super dry and brittle and makes it break really easily. Then on the flip side, you get moisture overload where too much moisture can cause things like hygral fatigue and you can make your hair feel limp, gummy and lose its elasticity. At first I thought maybe this still holds up. Maybe it's just an issue where the words are mixed up again, but it just didn't line up. Not once in the nearly 800 pages of my science hair bible did it ever mention protein overload, moisture overload, balancing protein and moisture, hygral fatigue, anything. So I had to find a study somewhere else. I was, I was stuck on this for days. I got nothing. No study ever used even one of those terms with one exception. There's a coconut oil study that hair people reference all the time. It says that coconut oil can get into your hair shaft and because oil repels water, putting coconut oil on your hair can reduce how much water makes your hair shaft swell. This is our only mention ever of the phrase hygral fatigue in any scientific study. Significant reduction in swelling suggests that this will prevent swelling and de swelling, hygral fatigue of the fiber. So what does this mean and what does it have to do with your hair? First, you need to understand your hair's basic structure, particularly the cuticle. Your cuticle is made of clear scales that cover the outside of your hair shaft and protect everything on the inside of your hair. This is your protection barrier. On average, Asian hair has the most layers of cuticle scales and African hair has the fewest. More layers means more protection. When your hair swells, it pushes your cuticle open. And the more you open your cuticle, the more you wear down your protection. Usually when we think about things that make our hair swell, things with a super low or super high pH like bleach comes to mind. Water also makes your hair swell, but something with a super high pH like bleach is obviously going to make your hair swell a lot more. So when that coconut oil study says high gruel fatigue, it's just a term they made up to describe damage that happens when your hair swells and then unswells when it gets wet and then dries. And it isn't about how much moisture is in your hair, more just that the cuticle keeps opening and closing. Literally any swelling or cuticle opening can damage hair. So I don't know why when water is doing it, we're giving it a special name, especially since things that open it more do more damage. 
I don't know. We don't actually have any proof swelling from water causes any noticeable amount of damage, even over time, but I think it's plausible and worth looking into. Even if your hair type is more prone to cuticle damage, please try not to let high growth fatigue stress you out too much. You'll probably prevent more damage than high growth fatigue could cause by getting a shower filter that's gonna remove the stuff that raises your cuticle way more than water does. Plus, most of us don't wash our hair every day, so it's gonna majorly cut down on the problem. And if you're still worried, you've got coconut oil. Just put it on before you get in the shower. High growth fatigue is not the opposite side of the coin to protein treatments, but we still haven't solved the mystery. If protein overload just kept water out of hair, that would be a good thing. So if too many protein treatments are causing problems for people, something else is behind it. No matter how much I searched, I could not find a single study that mentioned the existence of protein overload in hair. I had some theories, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. So I DM'd one of my favorite beauty experts, Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science. If you guys haven't seen her videos, you need to check them out. Most of her videos are more on skincare, but she does have some really good hair ones too. Michelle is a true expert with a PhD in chemistry. I am not an expert. I am just a nerd who is curious and then goes overboard finding answers. Anyway, I asked Michelle if she'd heard of any studies on this and she confirmed that I'm not going bananas, at least not about this. She explained that proteins can stick to the outside of the hair and too much of it can make the hair feel rough. And that's about it. So is protein overload or overproteinized hair real? Sort of, but not in the way that it's described. It's not that your hair needs moisture and proteins blocking the water from getting into your hair. It's real in the way that lipstick overload or over lipstick lips are real. You use too much of something, and so now the texture is kind of weird and gross and sticking to you. But you also can't blame the lipstick for the fat lip you were trying to hide with all that lipstick in the first place because it was there before you put any on. But then what about the symptoms of protein overload? So many people report them, so what's happening? I googled protein overload and pulled up this list of five signs of protein overload from one of the first blogs that came up. One, dry and brittle hair that breaks off. Two, feels stiff or straw-like. Three, significant change in hair texture. Four, loss of shine. Five, shedding. I want to touch on this last one shedding. Hair treatments of any kind should not be causing you hair loss. If this is happening to you, you could be experiencing some sort of irritation from the treatments. You should stop it right away. If you stop and there's still a problem, you really want to talk to either a trichologist or a doctor. It could be as simple as stress, in which case your hair will start to grow back once the stress dies down. Or it could be a sign of a more serious health concern, which is why, if possible, you really should consult with a professional. Based on these symptoms, I have a few theories on what's happening. First thing, people tend to use protein treatments on damaged hair. A lot of times that's why people are using them in the first place. So I think there are some instances where hair damage is getting blamed on the protein treatment when it's- <laughs> Punty! Yes, did you want to come in? Yeah, it's puppy time. Okay. Secondly, oh, it's just a happier video already. Anyway, Michelle explained how proteins can stick to the outside of the hair and make it feel rough. The straw-like hair, you get the texture changes, you get the loss of shine. It's because of the proteins getting stuck on the outside of the hair. Rougher hair increases the combing force and causes extra tangles, both of which lead to more damage and breakage. If you wanna hear more about combing force and tangles, I recommend you check out my split ends and hair breakage video. And then number three, it's possible that your treatment has a high pH level and that might be specifically to open up the cuticle and try and get proteins further down into your hair shaft. Even though the proteins temporarily strengthen your hair, blowing open your cuticle can still make it more susceptible to damage, especially if the treatment didn't include something to bring the pH level back down into a normal range. So what does this mean for you? First, have realistic expectations. They're not miracle workers. They're also not permanent. If you have severely damaged hair that's about ready to break off, your protein treatment might not save it. Secondly, don't use them all the time so that you can avoid the buildup of proteins on the outside of the hair. This might be why some of the protein moisture balance stuff is so prevalent because this is kind of the same thing you would do if it were actually caused by protein overload. Punzi. Again, another one that people recommend when they're talking about protein moisture balance, use a conditioning treatment to make it feel softer and hey, and to reduce combing force. It's probably mislabeled as moisturizing, which you know. 
And then finally, if it does happen to be a pH thing, and for whatever reason, your treatment does not bring your hair back down into a normal pH range, you may wanna use something like some sort of rinse that does that. And this does not mean sending your cuticle on a roller coaster ride and putting something on it with a super low pH, like pure, undiluted apple cider vinegar. Things with a super low pH also open up your cuticle. So if you do this, you're taking it from one extreme, it comes all the way down, closes it, and blows it back open again. Really, really, really damaging. Don't do that. Whoa, I'm gonna put you back outside because, because you, my friend, are too hair buddy today. All right, to sum things up, we've got a list of 10 key things we learned today. Number one, what everybody calls dry hair isn't actually dry. Number two, you do not need to add moisture to your hair. Number three, hair moisturizing products don't typically moisturize, add water, or hold water in. They condition. Number four, relative humidity mostly controls how much water is in your hair, not how much you use or don't use moisturizing products. Number five, damaged hair often has slightly more water in it than healthy hair. Six, needing to balance hair protein and moisture is a myth. Seven, hydral fatigue is a term made up to describe damage from the hair swelling and de-swelling when it gets wet then dries. It's not a special condition that occurs when hair gets too wet. Number eight, coconut oil can help reduce swelling of wet hair. Number nine, protein overload doesn't stop moisture from getting into your hair. And number 10, proteins from protein treatments can stick to the outside of your hair, so using too much can make it feel rough. There's a lot of myths wrapped up into that one word, moisturizing. It kind of gives you a new perspective on things once you learn this, and then all of a sudden you look at hair advertisements with a whole like new set of eyeballs. So if you made it this far, hopefully you're not upset with me. There's so much more to learn out there, and I hope that there's always times that I find out that I used to be wrong about something, because that means I'm continuing to learn. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments below. What is the worst bad hair day you've ever had? Is there a story behind that? What did it look like? If you wanna see more videos, remember to subscribe and ring the little bell if you want those to come right to you. Shout out today to Sydney Mitchell. You understand the struggle of having a dog that thinks that your hair is a chew toy. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Please don't come for me. They're gonna come for me with their shearing scissors. Say hi to the queendom. Hey, let go, let go, let go. Hey, 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 please let go, please let go. Oh goodness, let go. No, ma'am, no. Why are you so cute? You're so hard to get mad at. I can't be mad at you because you're so cute and fluffy and